Hey everyone, me Kevin here. In this video, I'm going to talk about what could crash the market tomorrow and why you've got to pay attention to something that happens pretty early tomorrow morning. So, at 5.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we're going to get the jobs report, which sounds basic, but it is one of the few remaining major catalysts that we have of mass potential uncertainty. Remember the amount of uncertainty we had just three weeks ago, which led to a pretty horrible September and a drawdown in the S&P 500 of uh, over 7%. The first time we've seen a drawdown of over 5% in over a year since September of 2022. Remember the catalyst we had? Government was going to shut down. The Evergrande crisis was going to create a recession. We are uh, we were going to miss the debt ceiling. We were going to default on our obligations. We were going to have an infrastructure nightmare lead to hyperinflation. We had inflationary concerns with inflation statistics coming out on October 13th. We have the uh, Jerome Powell and the Fed and the question of are they going to taper or not? And how long is it going to take for them to taper? And when are they going to raise rates? And we've got the jobs report. We've had all these seven uh, signs or, or seven issues of uncertainty. And almost all of them have gone away, with the exception of jobs and the October 13th inflation report. Almost everything else has been resolved. We have solutions now for the infrastructure package that looks like it's going to be somewhere around one and a half trillion dollars. We have the taper plan. We have a plan to avoid a debt ceiling crisis. Our government didn't shut down. Evergrande didn't, wasn't as bad as anybody thought it was going to be, which by the way is what we expected on this channel. In almost every Evergrande video I made, I said, I don't expect this to create contagion. It'll probably go away and I'm buying this dip. I'm really glad I bought the dip, but Tomorrow, we could see a big fat dip if these jobs numbers come in in an unexpected manner. So, we've got two potential directions this could go very bad. First, expectations. The expectation for the jobs report is that we are going to see 500,000 jobs. So, a headline number we're looking for tomorrow morning, first thing, is did we get 500,000 jobs more or less? In my opinion, if we're anywhere between 350 to probably 650, we're not going to be too terribly worried about what happens. It's just going to be another thing that we check off the list and go, okay, jobs report was a non-issue, moving on. However, there is also a number within the jobs report that's going to be closely looked at, and it's not just the unemployment rate, which we expect to go from 5.2% to 5.1%, which is kind of nominal, big deal, 0.1% movement to the downside, whatever. Uh, what we're actually going to be looking for is the average hourly earnings and their movement on a month to uh, over month basis. This is basically trying to figure out what the inflation rate is of uh, jobs and wages that people are being paid on a month over month basis. If we get, let's say, a strong payroll report, we get, let's say, 600,000 jobs, let's just say, but the average hourly earnings went up on a 1% month-over-month basis, which the expectation is 0.4%, last, last month was 0.6%, well, a 1% change month-over-month month would, on an annualized rate, be a 12% rate of growth in wages, which is a massive inflationary concern and is going to lead to potential issues for next Thursday, and the market's going to start pricing that in right away, I'm sorry, next Wednesday, when the inflation statistics come out. So you've got these two statistics. I would say probably the absolute worst case scenario is that we add way fewer jobs than expected. Let's say we come in at 300,000 jobs and the average month over month pay goes up about, let's say, 0.8 or 0.1%. This would be a stagflationary fear that, in my opinion, has a very real possibility of leading to a, an ugly and bloody red day just an hour before market opens tomorrow. I'll be buying the dip. But... Here's why. If we get fewer jobs created than we expected in September, which would be odd because in September, we're really expecting more jobs because remember, the federal unemployment boost expired, $300 a month expired September 3rd, and Delta concerns mostly went away in September. We had many more Delta concerns in August when we last had a big miss on the unemployment report. So if we get a low number in new jobs in September when some of these job fears are gone, again, unemployment and Delta, and those things are gone, and the number comes in low, 
That's bad. That's a sign that the economy is potentially stagnating, having issues solving, uh, solving the challenges that we face. Because we don't just face supply shortages or material shortages, we face worker shortages, which all lead to inflationary pressures. Bad. And if at the same time, then wages go up at a higher uh, rate, again, something close to like crazy, like 1%, the market's going to be screaming stagflation. We're probably going to see the 10-year Treasury yield pop over 1.6%, and I would expect to see some serious pain uh, in technology stocks. Now, a good scenario on a miss to the downside could be something like, okay, we get, let's say, 400,000 jobs, so it's a little bit softer than expected, maybe 300,000 jobs, but we have a low inflationary number. Let's say job uh, wages are flat, uh, no wage inflation, but a low jobs report. That could be good because it can actually signal to the market that, wait a minute, we might be having trouble getting jobs, but don't worry, wages aren't going up. Hey, Fed, maybe you shouldn't taper as fast. Let's keep that cheap money flowing to keep bond yields low and keep money, money, money flowing into technology and growth stocks. So that could actually be good on a miss to the downside. You're gonna have to evaluate both of these together. It's not just gonna be that top line number. Now then, of course, uh, the, uh, a similar problem could be something like having a, a massive beat on the payroll report and an inflationary number. So let's say we get a million new payroll jobs and we just totally blow this number out of the park uh, and we have a 1% month over month inflationary read on wages. This is going to be a sign where the market is saying, oh crap, maybe we're not stagnating, but we're definitely inflating and we're potentially overheating that could be another bad case scenario that actually motivates the Federal Reserve to speed up tapering. So stagflation on one side is bad, right? A low number on jobs and high inflation, very bad within the jobs reading. Uh, but another very bad scenario could be a massive bead on jobs, which is something you would expect people to cheer. It'd be a good thing. But if that number, that inflationary, that wage number comes in very, very high, the market is also going to freak out. So you've got two scenarios here where you could really have freakouts. Again, high inflation and a miss, stagflation. High inflation and a massive beat, overheating. We got to taper sooner, time to raise rates sooner. Inflation's out of control. We're running away. Both of these are very real uh, and, and negative scenarios. If we get a big beat on jobs and we have low inflation, that's probably a good scenario. That would reiterate that the, the Fed's probably on the right path, and I don't expect we would see much of a change in market uh, in markets. If anything, we could even see a little bit of a rally. Uh, and, and same thing to the downside, if we slightly miss on jobs to the downside, but there's no real change on inflation to in the downside, probably be totally okay. Now, the scenarios that I've just outlined could also have implications, not just for growth or, to, or, or stocks, but could also have implications for, infl uh, for crypto. Crypto, I think, is probably going to react positively to a higher month-over-month -month wage inflation. So uh, watch for that in crypto. But tomorrow's going to be a big day because, folks, I think it is literally one of the last two punch cards we have for uh, crises this year. I think if all of these issues go away, if this jobs report is benign, if the inflation report next week is benign, Personally, I think there's a chance we might see some volatility going into the end of the year as funds rebalance or take losses for taxes. But beyond that, uh, I really think there's a chance people are going to be plowing money into the stock market. And we could see that end of the year rally that I've kind of been hoping for and somewhat expecting since February. <laughs> but we've certainly been through a lot of pain since then. But these are the last two real market catalysts, in my opinion. Uh, jobs, again, tomorrow, 5.30 a.m. I will be streaming it live, so stay tuned. Please come. I would love to uh, watch the reveal with you live and then uh, analyze what's happening. I want to be awake for this because if I see a sudden panic in the market and a recovery, you know I'm buying that dip. All right, folks, thank you so very much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Thanks again. Bye.